for the invaluable job you are doing for the good people of this country. Thank you very much. We are grateful. Very few people in these days mm. are motivated to uphold the national interest. Mm. Because of material inducements, some people will prefer to take. Mm. And I just said that there are just a few of us in the system who uphold these values mm. for and on behalf of the good people of this country. Mm. I want you to continue this. By the grace of Allah Almighty, you will be appropriately rewarded and recognized on the day that it matters. Thank you very much. People say that mm -hmm. the seed you plant today mm -hmm. is a harvest you reap tomorrow. Uh, bye -bye. I have no <laughs> doubt in my mind that you will in the mm. nick of time. Mm. Along with your dedicated staff, and I'm very happy to see William, William today. No, uh, William, I, I've been in graphic with him. William, in, in, very bright young man in graphic. William, introduce Baba he has for us to go. Baba, Baba, <laughs> Baba. That was in the newsroom. Uh, <laughs> the, the man who was known in the newsrooms of newsrooms as Baba. <laughs> William, no, introduce Baba for me. Baba, Baba. <laughs> and if you go on our social I'm media page now, yeah. you will enjoy. <laughs> the Honorable A.B.A. Fuseni is a journalist, a communicator, a communication specialist, a member of parliament, and a lover of Ghana. Welcome one more time to 3FM 92.7. I'm happy to be here. Let's begin the call. Who, who is A.B.A. Fuseni for the uninitiated? Oh, just a very humble citizen of Ghana mm. and of Dagbon. Mm-hmm. Born in 1956, as you said, to uh, the Pambiao family, mm -hmm. and uh, my Alaza, Azara Alasan. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Tishigu Anglican Primary School in Rule 62 63. Okay. Uh, from there to Kalpohem Middle School, and then to Yendi Secondary School, mm -hmm. Yendi Secondary School to Tia Media mm -hmm. Secondary School in Kumasi, then to the University of Ghana, Legon. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, from Legon, when uh, it was time to do the service, uh, at that time the PNDC decided to experiment with uh, journalists mm -hmm. from graduates who were entering the service. Right. We inject them into the media. I mm -hmm. was the first among the first batch. Uh, at that time, Mr. Totobi Kwachi, uh, very visionary. Right. Leader at that time was Minister for Information. Right. And he undertook that experiment and I was among the first batch of graduates to be injected into the media from the Minister of Information. And uh, that is how I became a journalist. In fact, I, I had had some stint of journalism from the university days and others when our whole magazine and others as well as other publications in Legon excited our interest and we uh, made contributions to editing and other forms of journalistic work. So uh, from then I went to, uh, my first question was to the Minister of Information. After a brief stint, I was sent to uh, Ghanaian Times okay. in 1985. Mm. And then uh, spent some two years and some few months with Ghanaian Times. And uh, got employed at the Daily Graphic mm. in 1986-87. And uh, from there, I got a scholarship uh, to go and do a postgraduate diploma in journalism at the International Institute of Journalism, Berlin, okay. in 1987-88. Mm. And then I returned to Graphic, uh, was appointed the first political editor of the Daily Graphic, and uh, subsequently held mm. so many other positions mm. at the Daily Graphic. Right. Uh, interestingly, I also won a number of Media Awards as early as 1986, the most promising journalist at that time. And then also I won the best investigative journalist in 1999. And some other awards uh, in the GGA sponsored uh, events. Uh, I gravitated into politics. Right. We'll, we'll get into that. Decision, but let's talk about family. Yes. Uh, family. Let's talk about family. I mean, you're the man who is in the limelight. Everybody knows ABA Fuseni. But what about family? What yes, can you share? I'm happily married to Hadja Nafisa Fuseni. Mm -hmm. uh, got married in 
1996. Only year I remember is when I was eating the the, the salad rice. That's only what I remember that's, from, that's all you from remember. Adia. I don't remember the date of the wedding. Any other thing it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, sorry, I, I got married in 1988. Okay. 88, 89, 89, sorry, let me correct it. Right. March 1989. 89, right. Yes, and uh, I have four children, three mm. boys, one girl. Has, is, is anybody taking after you in terms of your communication expertise, your politics? My first son um, did political science like my good self. Right. Uh, he, he shows some interest in politics, do not like uh, overtly as I do. Mm. And uh, my second... Uh, Born, it's a lady. She's reading law as we speak now. She's uh, completing this year. Mm. Uh, my third boy is in the medical school. Uh, the last one is is a bit uh, of a hot character. He wants to go to the <laughs> army. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking, I, I I don't have uh, any of them who wants to take after me in journalism. Right. right. Uh, much as I would have wished, mm. at least one of them. But everybody has his gift. How, how did you get into politics? We, we knew in the newsroom, everybody loved your editing, your writing, and you have pieces of advice to everybody. And then suddenly, Baba is in politics. What happened? You know, you don't show an indigent the way to his house. <laughs> you know, the, the, they say that salt is not in a hurry to advertise itself. Mm. If it's in the soup or the stew and you taste it, you will bear eloquent testimony. <laughs> um, it was not an accident. Let me say it straightforward. I have always been a political animal. Mm. And even since my secondary school days. Uh, those who knew me, in fact, in my secondary school, I was given a nickname in any secondary school as Akasanuma. <laughs> because I, I used to like debate, especially political debate and others. And right. Take on people. Now. So mm. I've always been a political animal. Mm -hmm. uh, but my uh, surgeon into the media, this thing, like I explained, right. uh, came as a result of some of these interventions. Mm. But the political animal in me had always existed. Even when I was within the media, uh, Willie would tell me <laughs> that my NDC credentials were never hidden when I was in graphic. Okay. It was very clear. Mm. That was an NDC person, true and true. But what I did was that I always made sure that, notwithstanding my political position, mm. I functioned as a professional. The work had so to be when done. I was doing my job as a journalist, I endeavored to be very fair, mm. balanced, and, 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 and objective in, my, in the work that I carried out. Mm. To the point that, look, Johnny, I could tell you that uh, for instance, Mr. Dambuchi, who was the general secretary of the MPP at, at that the time, time, right? If you had any news to break out, he would give it to me first. I tell you, you can ask him because he had confidence in me mm. that when I did my work, notwithstanding my NDC credentials, mm. I would function as a professional. And so that is why the political desk of the graphic that and was very much sought after by all the political parties mm. because while we were there. Myself and my assistant, Kwekuti, would do the job and do it as evenly and mm. balanced in a manner that every political party uh, had a fair representation mm. and their story would be told just like that we would tell for the NDC and other political parties. Did Alaji take any inducements from people who wanted to come to you and say, well, this is something small for, for one or two? Johnny, that is why we left on a very high note. Mm. And the same way in the politics. Johnny, I have always said that if you are as tall as the electric pylon, you can't see tomorrow. So that is why in every place you find yourself, try and discharge yourself with integrity. Mm. Because tomorrow can always, and tomorrow will always come. Mm. There will be a day of accountability for everybody and everyone. In any job that you do, there are two levels of accountability. You account on this F mm. and you account in the hereafter. Mm. Maybe unless you don't believe it, but if you don't believe, like I've always said, sometimes you may say you don't believe in gravity, but jump and let's see whether you suspend. 
<laughs> Baba, you will come down. Ba Baba, between you and so uh, uh, you were asking me how uh, I went into politics eventually. That's right. Like I said, I have always been a political animal, and I believe there was a day I would go in. But there was an incident which happened while I was at Graphic. Tell me about it. In 2004, um, we were just at an editorial conference. That time, Mr. Elvis Ayer was there. That we was uh, we were at an editorial conference when some security came into. Uh, Tell our editor he first to whisper something to our editor. And the editor called me, Ed, I, is there a problem with your people? And I said, which people? He said, ah, are you uh, slated to be a chief? Unknown to me, some young men in Baslos had come to the premises of Graphic to agitate that he wanted me to come home and contest the Tamale North seat. So, when that crowd conveyed there, many people thought that you, you, those of you who are sadness here, mm, right. you, are, you, are, you can be at the, the, your, your workplace and they they'll come, come to and arrest you. And then they will and skin you. Something or like that. You. Uh -huh. So they asked me, oh, did they come to arrest me? I said, in my area, in fact, to be a chief, you have to go and lobby and even pay money. Mm. So we don't have that free luxury of being installed as chiefs like those of you in the South. You have to work, pay money, and lobby hard before you can even become a chief. So it, I don't think it is. So I, in the end, I had to go down. I went down and I found that these were young men, some from Tamale, some from Abubush, around. They gathered themselves and came that they wanted to prevail on me to go and contest the Tamale North seat on behalf of the NDC. And that was the turning point? And so um, at that time, my senior brother, uh, may Allah be pleased with his soul, Honorable Abu Right. he was a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. So I came down to address them and... Uh, I indicated to them that I thanked them profusely for the confidence they had reposed in me. And uh, I thought it was justifiable. But being who I am and being brought up in the traditional Dagumba uh, uh, culture that we had, you don't vie with your senior brother for a position. So I told them that I was, it was unfortunate I was going to disappoint them because I will not be able to vie with my senior brother, Honorable Abukar Simane, for that position. And on that score, I was going to plead with them and indicate to them that on the time that it matters most, if the Almighty Allah wish me to transit into politics, that avenue will surely come someday. And Johnny, through to his word, uh, were some, some of them were disappointed, but I managed to convince them. And, and through to, to Allah's will, in 2012, some narrow constituency was created. And I can say that I contributed immensely Towards that, and if time were to permit, I could have gone a little bit into it. Let, let's hear you. Yes, you have the time, Johnny. You remember um, some terrible incident happened in Dagon, a tragedy of monumental proportions when the Yana was made. And I'm sure you do remember that it took place on the 27th of March 2002. That's right. And uh, since up to that time, the perpetrators were not and had not been found. Uh, president Mills of blessed memory um, when he was president sought to get to the bottom of the matter and some suspects were arrested and arraigned before court and uh, it was in the process of the trial President Mills had them back on a regional tour and when he was just about to go to the northern region they were freed and mayhem broke out in Tamale all NDC structures Paraphernalia, everything were destroyed in Tamale and its surrounding areas. And so Tamale became a no-go area for the NDC. Uh, my brother, when that thing happened, uh, it was a great uh, source of worry and concern for His Excellency President Mills. And I say this, and uh, Johnny, you can speak to uh, Honorable Neil Ante Van der Poy. Right. Because he was director of operations at that time. That's right. And it was he who called me first and told me about the predicament of the old man. Mm. Mm. But then he was staying at the castle. So I, he, he, he invited me, went to the castle, and I went myself, him, the late President Mills, and the sister. We're the only four people when the discussion took place. And nobody, because they had tried to prevail on NDC people to see if they could intervene and try and see if some semblance of order could be brought back in Tamale. Anybody who was approached, because it was really hot, they are threatening that anybody who come, they'll kill you. 
And so nobody was prepared to go. I volunteered to put my life on the line for the NDC and others. With the blessing of President Mills, I said, I will go to Tamale. I took up the mantle, went to Tamale. Very difficult assignment. But by the grace of Allah Almighty and the respect I commanded within the family, the Andan family and others, I went there. Were you not scared? It was scary. But I said I was prepared to put my life on the line. Even when I called to arrange, some people say, if you come, we'll kill you. And I said, no problem. If I die in the course of the NDC or the Andani family or any other person, Alhamdulillah, I have no problem with that. I went. It was a difficult assignment. But at the end of the day, Alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah Almighty, we managed to bring sanity, brought a closure again, and the NDC activities resumed in the area. And so, President Mills of Blessed Memory, in recognition of this and other this is said that the first of May, Workers' Day, for the first time, we're going to be spent outside Tamale, outside Accra. And true to his word, and President Mills was a man of his word. On 1st May 2011, the work, May Day was celebrated in Tamale. And he took the opportunity to convene a deba of chiefs and others in the Sardargo Palace, which I was present. See, And there, the announcement was made about the creation of a Sardargo district. Following which, it's an arrow constituency image. And following which, I became the first member of parliament for the area. Congratulations. So, so you see how, the, right. the, you, by you the grace of you Allah, worked things worked. Mm. And uh, it was a good people of Sanaru themselves, recognizing what we had done. Mm. And the contribution we had made, who campaigned for me. But, but in your home region now and in your constituency, they say you will not be present in the next parliament. Uh, Johnny, mm. I am a, I'm a Muslim. Yes, sir. Everything that happens, you say it is the will of Allah Almighty. So on the day I was created, I was born, Allah had set the date for me. And so I, I, I am not somebody who goes into what destiny has decided. Otherwise, there's a big story to tell. And I can tell you, they, they say that the walking stick is long, but you have where you hold it. Right. Belchina doesn't tell his story at one stroke. We paraphrase them because there's a day on which there's a day of accountability. So, Johnny, I can say without any utter of doubt that the good people of Sanargo celebrate me. I can tell you even today. But they kicked you speaker. out. Johnny, I have, I have never been kicked out. So what happened at the primaries? Yes, that is why I'm just indicating to you that they did not endorse me for another term. But I can tell you, Johnny, I will now wish... One of these days, you take your cameras and others and go to Sanaru and talk to the ordinary people on the ground. Okay. The delegates did not renew my decision, but I can tell you that I'm so very well appreciated by the good people of Sanaru. If even for nothing, they have given me three solid terms, three mm. consecutive terms. Mm. Johnny, I can tell you that you don't realize the importance of your botox until there's a boil on it. Baba, Baba, what do you, what do you? What, I just, I just want you to keep your hold your peace mm. for some time, and the appreciation that I'm talking to you, you will see it. Will you go back to Parliament? No, you are done with Parliament. I think that, I think that, um, generally, I, be, I believe in myself that it's time to move on. Move on to there, what? There are many capacities in which I can serve the NDC. Right, and I have no doubt in my mind that by the grace of Allah Almighty. Inshallah, Inshallah, Inshallah. His Excellency President Mama will be declared President elect after December 7th, 2024. Elections. And will be sworn in on January 7th, 2025, as the President of the Republic of Ghana. I have no doubt in my mind. Inshallah, it is going to you will be Minister for Information. And and I, 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 Minister for Information. I am willing to Minister serve, for Communication. I am willing to serve His Excellency President Mama in any capacity. But you have a choice. I, 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 I have said that I can. I, even if President Mama wants me to be his security man at the uh, uh, Flax House, I will do it. You are pro Mahama, proper, proper. I am Mahama, not pro. <laughs> <laughs> Baba, I am telling you. And, and, and I'm saying that that is a cross I've had to carry and I will carry it. And I've indicated to you that it is time to go to every nook and cranny of this country to campaign. And I'm using your very august platform to call on all uh, 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 NDC members, all Ghanaians who mean well for this country to embrace the mantra of change in the 2024 election. 20 this country has been so destroyed to a point that if we leave this 
crop of people in, in, in government at this time, mm. this country will be no more. 2024 will not be a walk in the park. The MPP wants to break the eight. You want to win power. So it will be tough. Johnny, the eight has already broken the MPP. How? Uh, when the house has fallen, you ask if the roof is still standing. The man who dies in the market, do you need to announce his demise? It's clear. The MPP is dead in the market. Their house has collapsed. Their roof cannot stand. It's clear. Who in his sane mind, Ghanaian, going through these excruciating hardships, given this catastrophic mismanagement of our economy, given this disastrous, visionless, hopelessly uninspiring leadership, would want the MPP back in power? Who? Which sane Ghanaian will want that? It's abundantly clear. I mean, look, unless we are not content with the level of this grace Ghana has suffered. We have never suffered this level of humiliation and embarrassment in the, in the annals of our country's history, in the eyes of the international community of nations. It hasn't happened. The president when have we ever reneged on the payment of our debts? Can you tell me? In now over 60, uh, six. Uh, six years of history. Johnny, can you tell me? Can you tell me when we have suffered the most embarrassing downgrades? Look, you are downgraded to the point of junk. And then you hear something like feather junk. Even junk, what is junk? If you are downgraded, Johnny, to junk, and they come with a downgrade feather junk, it, 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 it tells you that I, I, you are less worse than grass. Hmm. Worse than anything. Where have you ever seen that? But the president is still confident. Yesterday you heard him speak about, you know, COVID-19 and, and all the other things. Johnny. Know. Yes. The panacea for hunger is not to hurt feces in your stomach. In the hope that your stomach is inflated and you are satisfied. You should go and look for food to eat. If you are hungry and you inflate your stomach with air, when the bubbles get out, the reality will dawn on you. The president is living a life of delusion. He's deluding himself. I'm sure that he's, in, in, in his conscious moments publicly, you admit that he has been a real disservice to this nation, unfortunately. Because, look, and I said it, that Allah Almighty is infinite wisdom. If Nana Kufadu hadn't become president, Ghanaians would have said that this is the best president we never had. But God wanted them, to, Ghanaians, to see who he really is and what capabilities he really has. And that is why, in his infinite wisdom, he asked President Mama to step aside. That's why I'm saying so sometimes, when Allah asks you to step aside or steps you aside, it's a glory. It's not a humiliation. That's why when you mentioned this, Anaro, I said, don't be in a hurry. Right. Okay? So, President Mama said it. That time would have vindicated him. Today, Nana Kufuado has taken He told us that the country was awash with money. A lie. He and Dr. Baunya. Right. That he worked at the Bank of Ghana and knew that man. Yet he said, come to you. He said, no, yet he said, come to you. Okay? Under his watch, he said, we will not borrow. The borrowing was an act of lazy governance. Am I lying? When he was leaving office, President Mama was leaving office on the 7th of January 2017. Our total indebtedness was 120 billion. Today, what is our level? After six years of Nana Kufadu, we went to over 600 billion Ghana cities. Just do the mass. From 120 billion to over 600 billion. For a, a, a person who had indicated we were not going to borrow, the borrowing was an out of Lady Gorda, and that the money was here. Let's not forget that mantra. Where's our like bullets? When you fire them, you can't record them. Okay? So today, look at our economy. Our economy is in total shambles. They told us that through his finance minister that we are not going to IMF today, we are not going to IMF tomorrow. IMF, we are a dignified people. Right. We are a, people a of proud, honor. A proud nation. A proud nation of proud people. We will not go to IMF. IMF is a disaster. So, Johnny, by your own reckoning, if you tell us that an institution is a disaster and you walk us into that institution, what are you doing to us? 3FM, by your own reckoning. Okay. Should Mr. Foyata go? So that's why I tell you that him and his functionaries are a disaster for should, this country. Should, should Mr. Foyata go? The president made a pledge that, look, if we're done with the IMF, by the time we finish with the IMF deal, then we can talk about Mr. Foyata staying or going. Now the IMF deal is in. Should he go? 
uh, uh, for that should have been history by this time when you are speaking you should have become history at least not two years ago or more president thinks otherwise johnny it is morally reprehensible never in the annals of our country's history have we had our morals so debased especially by what this government has done and what Ken Furata has done, that you are finance minister and then your own company, anytime you go to borrow, your company profits from that borrowing. So do you know why, why, he did, why we engage and back on the path of reckless, irresponsible borrowing? Because anytime we borrow, Ken Furata's data bank makes money. So it makes sense for him to just go and be, continue reckless borrowing so that any amount we borrow, they'll make more money. So today, Kenaforata and his company have become richer at the expense of poor uh, 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 laboring Ghanaians. But that means that you have then run the government on a zero percent page. Is that, is that a verdict for the government that they have failed? It's a disaster, not just failed. Today, I'm saying that the sweetness of the pudding is not in the aroma it emits, it's in the eating. The quality of your work reflects in the quality of life of the people. Johnny, not too long in the debate on the budget. I took Kenke to Parliament. I had taken Kenke the previous year. Kenkeonomics. Mm. Yes, Kenke and fish, which is the basics for the ordinary people of this country. The previous year, it had been two cities. And the fish that attended in evidence at that time was five cities or so. In a year, it had, Kenke had gone to five cities, even if you go to some places, they said to even Kenke, some six cities. And the fish, the price has more than doubled. All of twelve cities. Yes. Five cities plus. Okay. So I tell you that it, just in a year. And this one is just a reflection of the basic step. That's just Kenke. More than the Kenke and fish, more than the minimum wage. Just Kenke and fish. Today, look at in spite of all these hardship Ghanaians are going through, look at electricity tariffs. Johnny, 75% within this short period. And every three months, they are slated to increase. Because of the IMF deal. Exactly. Who, who took us to IMF? If you are suffering in, in hell, blame death. The president said where we find ourselves. Where he took us. We didn't find ourselves. Ghanaians didn't find themselves there. He took us. He and his bunch of incompetent people took us to where we are. You know the president doesn't like that word, incompetent. In fact, it's super incompetent. It's not about whether you like a word. In fact, it's not visionary at all. There's no vision. And I'm, in, and I'm indicating to you, go and read the MPP manifesto. And read their, 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 their pledges they made to Ghanaians. They are, they are taking us from taxation, uh, from from uh, 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 transition to production. production. That's right. Dr. Johnny, Palmier. where is the where is the production? No, but the, the factories are coming up. Don't you see the factories? Coming where? Can you show me? Over where one hundred and fifty factories. Where That's they? what the president. Where said. are they? Johnny, you are in the media. Oh, Tell I, me. I, I like you, but if you do this, because the president said with the factories. I am saying that where are they? Three FM ninety two. West are like yam. You can eat them back. Mm. And many people eat their west back like yam. And this government has an, a penchant for consuming their west. Even sometime before they dry up. So where are they? Go and look. This is the government that has engaged in the more ex, the most extortionate taxations of Ghanaians than ever before. Ghana is one of the most extortionately taxed in the sub region. Meanwhile, when you ask, there's a reference to COVID and uh, 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 Ukraine, Russia, Russia and Ukraine. Burkina Faso. Yeah, it's closer to uh, uh, Ukraine. Am I lying? What is the inflation rate in Burkina Faso? Single digit. Proverbs what is been, the cost of living? Proverbs are Single digit. attributed to you, which are not okay. proverbs. Proverbs. A lot of those wise sayings that you have. I mean, you're known for that. But people frame things and they put it on you. How do you feel about those proverbs? Oh, I, I think that in our tradition, um, is the, 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 Dagbong, the Dagbong custom and tradition is replete, very rich in proverbs. And I used to sit with a lot of the old people. Even in my days at Graphic, anytime I was on leave, I had the opportunity to go home. I go and visit the old people. I used to go to some of times the villages in my constituency. At that time, I was not a member of parliament. Just go to greet people, see how conditions are. And sometimes when you can help 
you did some few renovations and others. You did in the service of the community. I sit with the old people. They are a fountain of wisdom. If you go and sit with our own people, then I'm, I'm taking this opportunity to uh, counsel our youth that they should endeavor to have some time at least once a month, once uh, uh, in three months or so, to sit down with the old people mm. and they will imbibe useful things. Our people say that if the old man has no morsel of food to give you, he has an item of wisdom to guide you someday. You will learn a lot from them. And I think that that will be very instrumental in enriching the content of their lives. But how, how do you and, keep and all you, these proverbs in your head? Because we speak to you in less than five minutes, you drop like six, seven proverbs. Uh, Johnny, it's, it's, it's a gift of the Almighty Allah. You don't plan, like we say, I mean, it's, there are not things that you plan. As we speak, it goes on. So you can say, Johnny, you have your gift. Mm. Your gift of being able to send messages and communicate with Ghanaians in manners that touch their sensibilities. That is a peculiar gift God has given you. Willie has his gift of communication. So William has been trying a few proverbs here. And it's a gift. <laughs> uh, see, so uh, uh, clearly, uh, the Almighty is infinite wisdom. Has made everybody with his special gift that he has given. You. For example, so, so, somebody said that if a short person says that your hair is nice, then you have to be checking your zip. Then they attributed that to you. That's clearly not your. Problem. It's possible that it's possible that you can get uh, some in the system that. Uh, Try to do this thing because mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's about trying to gain some credibility and some level of humor, if you put it at that way. Uh, but you know, as the saying goes, plenty meat, no the spoiled soup. <laughs> so, yeah, so if if it comes like that, uh, so be it. But I have sought to advertise that Dagbon has rich uh, culture, has rich uh, 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 linguistic mm. uh, etiquette and I believe that there are things that I, I intend to sell out and uh, I intend to come very mm. big on that by compiling a book and coming out with something that oh, very very soon sell. it's long by, overdue by the grace, yeah, I agree it's actually long overdue yeah, for, but, for a prolific writer be, like you better late, better late than never editing our scripts and reddening the, the pages for us you know, there's a <laughs> saying that the cobbler never has a, a fine bag in his own house <laughs> so obviously uh, it's something that uh, I've had appeals being made to for a long time. Mm. Uh, but everything has its date. I want to believe that the day and time is coming mm. when I believe something of that lesson will be done to help uh, not only advertise the bank culture, mm. but also ensure that uh, uh, our rich Ghanaian cultural heritage mm. is advertised at home and abroad. You and the uh, president so are, are nearly... I, I'm uh, saving you. I don't want you to touch your head. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Is this the, the IMF kind of haircut for bondholders? No, that or? one is no longer hair, it's haircut. They're cutting the head off. Yes. Not the haircut. Ah, but if they are cutting people who, even pensioners, whose uh, lifelong savings are being threatened to you, it's death. You know that some of the pensioners and others who rely on medication and others can die as a result of what is happening. Mm. And I've even heard that even some who are owed money by government, contractors and others, some have, some have died out of frustration and uh, 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 despondency. So it's, it's, not, it's not haircut, it's haircut. Where the, prom, the president had promised us that uh, 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 there will be no uh, haircut. Mm. And he cast, you see, and that is where respect for that office will win. You, Johnny, mm. uh, people have a saying that when a lion is found of patronizing the marketplace, they will treat it like a puppy. <laughs> you see, because your office is exalted, it should be mm. it should be revered. But when you when you bring it down through st things that you should not be saying, a president saying things which are untrue, a vice president having an image of being somebody who peddles on truth. How do you expect people to treat you? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You behave like a lion when you even come. To the market. Nobody you fears you again. Treated like a puppy. Yeah, they were treated like a puppy. The, 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 the book that you want to author, what, what, what would the title of this book? Is it, would, just, would it just be Proverbs? You know, I don't want to drink the soup before the cheese. A book of many Proverbs or a book of Proverbs or uh, Proverbs upon you Proverbs. You must first or... have head before you can chew corn. Mm. So let me get the book first. I hear you. And I'm sure that uh, it is the day the market is established that it will be given a name. 
So when you have not yet established the market, you are not in a hurry to find a name for it. So I'm sure that we will get there by the grace of Allah. I see. And, uh, Listen, you and the president are of similar height, but you said everything has gone up except the president's height. People found it hilarious, but looking at it critically, you and the president are height mates, are yes. you, aren't you? Maybe I'm just one inch taller. <laughs> but that is not the point. Johnny, uh, where, where, where this thing came up at uh, uh, setting the record straight, right. uh, NDC, this thing, right. and uh, right. uh, there was serious lamentation about the rate at which prices and everything was going up. And so I sought to give it a humor and say that, look, and I said it myself, I'm sure that maybe people have conveniently also left that one out. Because I said, I am also vertically challenged. And so, uh, notwithstanding that, right. prices of everything was going up. But because it was not under my watch, <laughs> but under the watch of the president, I said, ah, everything is going up, I saved his sight. But that is the truth. What do you want to because be everything is going up. What do you want to be remembered for? ABA for saying. First and foremost, um uh, I want to be remembered as somebody who made his contribution to the progress of this country. In the field of journalism, I'm sure my record is there. Mm. But more importantly, in the realm of politics, Johnny, I'm very proud today to stand here and see without any iota of contradiction that I feel elated that I've made a significant contribution to improving the lives of tens of thousands of Ghanaians, especially those in my constituency. And that's why I'm, I'm throwing this challenge to you. I want you to get the opportunity and go to San Naro Consuelo, go village to village. Mm. Johnny, before I became member of parliament, there was a death of electricity supply. Many of our people were living in darkness. More than 23, 24 communities had never seen electricity supply. They had no safe, portable water supply. They had no clinics or hospitals. In many of the areas, they had no schools. Students were working many miles to school in many of the areas. Johnny, our mothers and others, many of them did not have even means of just trying to end some basic livelihoods. Johnny, my tenor as a member of parliament, by the grace of Allah Almighty, has brought relief to tens of thousands, like I said, in my constituency. Today, in less than two years after becoming member of parliament, all the electricity problems in my constituency were sorted out. As far as electricity connection to the national grid was concerned. We only had problems with extension of electricity in areas where it already existed. Right. But in areas about the 24 communities, they were not there, I can tell you without any idea of doubt, that within this year's, there are older constituencies in Sanaro constituency which are still battling with it. And the secret is uh, by the grace of my presence and my harmonious working relationship with President John Dramani Mahama. Between 2013 2014, we sorted it out. The same way water went, the same way six classroom blocks, four classroom blocks, three classroom blocks in many communities. And for the first time in many constituencies, we were teaching computer literacy in villages in some of my constituencies because we are connected electricity to them and I supplied computers. And all this because you were there in the exactly. for, for those so things. So that's why I'm saying that I feel elated today when even many of the village people say, MP, by the grace of Allah Almighty, we cannot repay you. It's the Almighty God. And so I feel a sense of relief that I have been of service to my community. I have contributed to making life a little bit bearable for many people. And for me, that service is the greatest thing that I take this, this, in my stride. All these things that you have done, you have a successor now who is on the ticket of the NDC. Do you have confidence in that individual to, I, 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 let to me hold say, on to power? Let me say with the, without any iota of doubt that Sanaru deserves to remain NDC. And whatever we'll do to make sure that the Sanargo seat is retained by the NDC. And President John Dramani Mama's vote mm. increases in Sadargo. By the grace of Allah, we are going to do it without any Do you have confidence in the individual? Yes, sure. I mean, mm. whoever, whoever is, is, is uh, in, the, in the wisdom of the delegates uh, 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 should take over for me. So be it. He, he deserves the support of all of us who are in the NDC. I, I hear the ladies love your proverbs. And then they are head over heels in 
you know, falling for you here and there, the ladies. But, they but, they but love your proverbs. Who speaks out when he put in his mouth? <laughs> Baba! <laughs> Baba, what is your favorite <laughs> song? As, as I said, Jimmy Cliff, what else? We're wrapping no, up. Did you, 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 uh, you see the lyrics? Right. Have you analyzed it? No, I'll listen Jimmy to Jimmy Cliff sang this song in 1972. Mm. But play it today. He says, too many people are suffering. Too many people are sad. Too many people are suffering. Too many people are sad. Too little people got, got everything. While too many people got nothing. Does it summarize what we have here today? Does it, does it ring a bell mm. today? In closing, if, in Ghana. You, if you met the president today, what would you tell him? One on one. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. President. Sorry, whatever dreams you claim to have had for this country have all evaporated. The dreams have evaporated. Yes, and in turn, your legacy is a sorry one. So? Sorry, you failed. ABF Husseini, Baba, thank you so much indeed for coming. We are grateful that you could share your money with us. We're happy. You want to leave us with a proverb? Oh, Johnny. <laughs> you see, they say the disease that caught the vulture and made it bald. Mm. If it should catch a fowl, it would be in the cooking pot. <laughs> well, I just wanted to... You see? <laughs> yeah, well, no, oh, no. That is no, the what? essence. No, no, no. Baba, you have to bring that proverb back again. The disease... That caught the vulture. Right. And, and made, made it, it bald. You know the vulture is bald. That's right. It's a disease that caught it. Mm. If that disease should have caught a fowl, it would be in the cooking pot. I just wanted your Wait. comments on, on the state of the media now. Since you left. Yeah. Uh, uh, briefly. Willie, you remember the, the days when we were there? Journalism was more of a commitment and a calling. Now, people went into journalism by dint of the fact that they thought they had something very positive to contribute. But today, journalism has become a stopgap avenue or employment source for many people. People think that, oh, let me get there and in a stopgap see if I can hang on while I look for a more permanent job somewhere. Okay? So you, 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 you don't get people who are committed to ensuring that the ethics of the profession and join them to do what is right and proper. Way forward. So many people are simply mercenaries. They just go in there, and anybody who can pay you to do any dirty job, right. can pay you. So what's the way forward, Baba? So that's what I'm saying. That uh, is 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 to ensure that we get people, those who are enrolling into uh, uh, media houses and others, through the interviews and others. You, 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 because some are put as stringers for some time and you'll be able to do an assessment and see whether these people are motivated towards ensuring that they're this thing or they are just there to make money. Thank you. Will, so, will Baba go and teach? Uh, With all this knowledge that you have, which we have benefited from, will you go and teach? Um, I have been a teacher before. In fact, I was teaching government. No, journalism school. Um, your, your own GIG. Let, let, let me not say... Um, I was board chairman for GIJ Governing Council before, so mm -hmm. uh, it's not a place I'll run away from. But um, I will just say that, uh, Johnny, I told you mm -hmm. something at the beginning. Right. That you can be as tall as the electric pylon. You cannot see tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so ba -ba. I, cannot, I cannot sit here and diagnose the issues of tomorrow. Baba. Uh -huh. But Allah is the ultimate. I see. Uh -huh. And so if you are talking about the journalism, mm. uh, how can I shy away from uh, uh, sharing knowledge in journalism? Mm. No matter how disenchanted the old soldier is, can he shy away from the barracks? <laughs> Baba, know. thank you. Thank you so much indeed so for your time. I'm, this I'm, I'm very grateful for, and let me salute you guys mm. for the wonderful work. Look, today it is fashionable for people to just sit down where you are, mm. where I have been. Right. To just say that, look, this nation is immersed in corruption. People are finding ways of making themselves better. Mm. Let me go and also take what I have to take and go and look after my family. Right. And sacrifice. The destiny of this country. Mm. That is why I'm saluting the lives of you, Uli, and all of you here. Right. For taking the bull by the horse. Mm. 
and working to ensure that integrity, truth, honesty get rooted in this country. Mm -hmm. And that we can say to authority right. what others are petrified to say to them because they are thinking about their pockets. Okay, we have to go. But the good Lord mm. doesn't contract debt, but he pays debt. Thank you very much. And I'm much. very grateful that whatever seed you are sowing today will be a harvest for you tomorrow. Thank you. Baba. We're grateful. Uh, today, mm. we are unable to carry fix. Mm. We are adding locks. Johnny, mm. today, truth is being sacrificed. But I've said that a lie is like a pregnancy. The older it goes, the more exposed it becomes. Mm. Baba. <laughs> but unfortunately, mm. We have done something in this country that we must learn from. Which is? Because our old men have told us that if you make the hyena the caretaker of your kraal, mm -hmm. don't expect to come and find one animal alive. If you have people who have a penchant for squandermania mm. presiding over the affairs of your state, mm. what will be your the state of your finances? Baba, thank you very much. Let's, let me take you to Dagbong. Listen.